Namaskar, hello and welcome viewers. You're watching Committee Report with your host Kriti Mishra. Today we'll take a closer look at the report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs on Police Reforms. Police is a state subject falling in state list in the 7th schedule of the Constitution of India. It is primarily the responsibility of the state governments to fill up the vacancies in the police force in their respective states. The centre also issues advisories from time to time to the states for filling up these vacancies in the states and to bring in the requisite reforms in the police administration to meet the lawful expectations of the people. The centre also maintains central armed police forces like BSF, CISF, CRPF and ITBP. However, these forces are deployed to assist the state governments and UTs in maintaining public order on their request. The debate on police reforms has been a long-standing one and has spanned over more than four decades. Over these years, several commissions have been set up at the highest levels of the government and they have submitted their reports and recommendations. And for deeper insights on the need for police reforms, the key recommendations of the Parliamentary Committee and the action taken by the government, I am joined by an illustrious panel of guests. Joining us on the programme, Professor Sri Krishna Deva Rao, Vice-Chancellor, Nalsa University, Law, Hyderabad. Also joining us, Mr. Neerat Sinha, Additional Director General, Bureau of Police Research and Development. And in the studio, we have with us Mr. Somesh Goyal, former DGP, Himachal Pradesh. I welcome all of you to Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. And Mr. Goyal, let me begin the program with you. Yeah. Of course, we've been discussing the recommendations given by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs, on Police Reforms, Modernization and Training. So recently, the government has also given the Action Taken Report. Yes. Take us through the big takeaways. You know, uh, there were very comprehensive uh, uh, recommendations made by the committee, particularly on the training, modernization, housing and uh, behavior of the police on these matters. And uh, it is quite gratifying that the, the report, the action taken report that has been shared by MHA uh, with the committee and the committee has uh, really felt uh, satisfied with the response of uh, MHA on most of the issues. Uh, they, oh, their only concerns are in the field of, uh, still in the field of training and exclusion of certain items from modernization like police housing. Uh, that's one and uh, training continues to be their main uh, concern, I would say. But overall, they have expressed their satisfaction. Another area where the committee still wants more action done is uh, the cyber uh, security. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, what, whatever MHA has been doing uh, with, uh, with its subordinate uh, offices like BPRND and uh, other agencies, the kind of inputs they are providing to the police, kind of schemes they have launched and uh, the budgetary allocation that is being done under modernization which had been stopped in 2009, uh, which was revived by, the, by this government. I think uh, it has taken the police uh, as a family quite, uh, quite forward and uh, they are able to do a lot better than they used to because uh, they have got funds to equip themselves to the service of uh, the people. So, since we've been saying <coughs> that this debate is on for uh, decades now, yeah. colonial legacy is one of the issues concerning Indian police uh, services and also police as a whole, sir. So, do we need to revisit laws now? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to, uh, you know, we have to prepare the police for the next millennial. Uh, you know, we cannot, uh, we cannot remain mired in the last century or uh, the uh, colonial period. Most of the laws that we have, be it for the police or uh, the correctional services, these are all the colonial laws. Fortunately, uh, following the recommendations of certain commissions, MHA has initiated an overhauling of the whole criminal justice system. And recommendations of the states, governors and every, everybody, think tanks are available with them and they are working on it. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, we should be able to come up with a very forward looking, a modern set of laws that will enable the police to deliver services and to come up to the expectations of the people, taking on different challenges 
newer challenges as we progress. Absolutely, the reforms that further fortify the criminal justice delivery system in the Absolutely. country. On that note, let's uh, take in other panelists <laughs> as well. Uh, Mr. Sinha, now the modernization of police forces scheme was initiated in 1969 and 70s and it has undergone several revisions over the years. Now the Supreme Court in the landmark Prakash Singh case of 2006 gave several directions that considerable work in police reforms is still needed. But we see that due to the lack of political will in the states, these directives are not implemented in letter and spirit. So your opening thoughts on the need for police reforms. Thank you. Uh, let me begin by uh, thanking the Sunset Television for this opportunity to be here. And equally, uh, uh, gratitude on behalf of the Indian Police Fraternity to the Parliamentary Committee, which has uh, uh, allowed us to engage and uh, leverage the wisdom uh, of uh, honorable members of parliament from all over the country. Uh, police reforms, as you uh, rightly uh, flag, uh, 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 has been uh, a slow progress over the decades. There are multiple reasons for that. But I can assure uh, the sense of television and your viewers that the government and each of the instruments available to the government are leveraging whatever is available today to take the uh, modernization drive forward. Uh, uh, you are aware that there are increasing and emerging concerns. The concerns of today are no longer resonate with the concerns of decades ago. Uh, there are uh, issues relating to drones, for instance, rogue drones, the, uh, the, uh, the issue of uh, uh, using drones for effective work. There is also the, uh, the question of finding out what is it that the citizens of the country at large feel about the policing services on offer. And here I'd like to uh, flag the point that the, uh, the Bureau of Police Research and Development has initiated in association with the National Council for Applied Economic Research, a nationwide project where the intent is to reach out to multiple stakeholders, including the citizens, and find out from them as to what is it that they feel about the policing services on offer. Uh, there was also this uh, 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 the concern about police training, which uh, uh, Sumesh sir had rightly flagged. Let me also use this opportunity to uh, indicate to your viewers that the government of India, in association with state governments all over the country, uh, has initiated a project whereby there is a serious effort on, as we speak, to revisit the syllabi relating to the cutting edge uh, ranks of the police, the constables, the sub-inspectors who man the police stations and who remain really the face of the Indian police as well as deputy superintendents of police. And each of uh, the syllabi uh, is being, there is an endeavor to try and relate to emerging concerns and to factor in each of these concerns in the model syllabi that is being developed. Once we have the syllabus in place, once the, uh, our police academies, whether at the central level or in the states, begin uh, sort of drawing upon the syllabus which is being prepared, uh, taking modern concerns uh, into context, I have no doubt that both issues relating to training as well as modernization will be addressed to a fair degree. Absolutely, sir. Um, thank you so much for sharing that crucial information with us. Let me take that point to Professor Rao. Professor Rao, as Mr. Sinha pointed out, finally we are seeing the change in the syllabi. It was perhaps the need of the hour. Sir, what are the ingredients or uh, the elements that we need in the modern syllabi? What kind of amalgamation do you expect? Thank you, Kriti. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity to interact with all the panelists. Uh, uh, Somesh ji and uh, Neeraj ji have highlighted and the importance of the training and modernization and the police reforms which has been pending as you rightly said for more than four decades starting from Dharamvira Commission, National Police Commission in 1980. Several commissions have been uh, looking into this. Uh, I am privileged and honored to be part of this panelist uh, uh, 
because I also chaired the Criminal Law Reforms Committee report, which That's right, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs is uh, actively considering the reforms, the Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code and Indian Evidence Act. Uh, we have also uh, were discussing about Prakash Singh case uh, and the uh, Rajya Sabha, the uh, Parliamentary Standing Committee and Home Affairs have pointed out because the policing is a state subject, there was some problem in the implementation and majority of the states are in the process of institutionalizing that is necessary. Soli Sorabji committee as long ago has suggested a model police act when we are moving towards uh, you no know, decolonization. I think where the prime minister and the home minister have rightly has underscored there's a need to democratize uh, the criminal laws and the police system also. And the Supreme Court in the Paramvir Singh case also has mentioned about uh, the installation of uh, CCTV cameras in the Indian police station. I think uh, this is a right and opportune time. All these are coming together and also Supreme Court also is equally concerned. Just as Sanjay Kishan Kaul bench has been uh, seriously considering about reforms of the arrest law. And that was also one of the important issue which was highlighted in the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Home Affairs. Nalsar uh, is uh, working with the Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy. We need to have a robust and uh, a comprehensive curriculum for the police training in India. We will be happy to collaborate with the National Judicial Academy, Sardar Vallabhai Patel National Police Academy and Nalsar. We will all we will take uh, the views of the uh, various stakeholders and uh, we will be happy to start with the police training. I'll just uh, leave with one idea is uh, always as a person who has been as a teacher and a scholar in criminal law, I always used to say policing is a public service and the parliamentary committee also has mentioned about this. Uh, uh, we need to see that the public, the citizen should enter into a police station like any other, uh, like a revenue office or for any other public official. I Absolutely. think that requires a lot of coordination working together. I'm happy that the Ministry of Home Affairs and BPRND have initiated this and uh, hopefully uh, very soon these uh, reforms will be taken up with much more urgency. Absolutely, sir. And thank you so much for setting the tone and tenor of this discussion. But I'll uh, get back to the concerns, Mr. Goyal. Now let's talk about the ratio and the strength. And let's take into uh, consideration 2016. Now the sanction strength was around 188 per lakh people. Yeah. The actual strength was 137 per lakh people. Whereas the recommended strength by the United Nations, that is 222. How do we address that shortfall? You know, it's a uh, police being a state subject. I think uh, it will always be uh, a concern for the state governments uh, that how many uh, how many people they would be like to uh, they would like to put on ground for policing work. One thirty seven twenty one percent overall uh, um, uh, vacancy position is awful. There is no doubt that there is so much of pressure on uh, routine policing and with the work of policing getting more and more complex, people becoming more and more aware, demand of people and uh, policy makers becoming more, I think uh, the policemen on the ground are stretched. There has to be from time to time a study of the number of people that are required. Absolutely. Most of the state police security boards do not exist. Mm -hmm. Wherever they exist, they don't meet. For instance, in my state, Himachal Pradesh, we have had, despite the fact that having a police act and all these boards and all these things in place, we have had only one meeting so far in the last 10 years. Now, if the government, leader of opposition and other people, eminent people who are on the board, they don't meet and prepare an annual plan budget for all these things, discuss these things, I think there will be a serious problem and the common policeman who is on the ground or in the police station, he will be stretched and we will show that the problem of uh, stress, yoga and other things, 
these are symptomatic treatments we are not going to the root cause of these things yes so number of people the number of vacancies the vacancy has to be reduced because the freedom will have to be given once you have sanctioned posts the file should not go up and down in the secretariat for taking permission of recruitment and unfortunately in most of the states recruitments now take place only in the final year of the term so no. that is also a very bad thing Absolutely. for career management and uh, whole planning of the police as you were talking that political will is very very crucial Absolutely. for police reforms in the states because police is a state subject now another concern that i'd like to touch upon mr sinha is that the nature of crime has also <coughs> changed as per the ncrb data cyber crime cases have increased from 27000 to 48 in 2018 to over 50000 in 2020 now the committee has observed that these crimes are mainly related to financial transactions how do we employ technologies like artificial intelligence big data for mapping the crime hotspots and provide specialized training to our police forces uh you would recall that a while back i had uh, uh, flagged the point that the concerns of today may not resonate with the concerns of uh, uh, 20 years ago absolutely uh, cyber crime uh, like you rightly pointed out remains uh, an area of uh, increasing concern and it is with that in view that not just the bprnd and the national police academy hyderabad but each of our training institutions have uh, uh, started a process of familiarizing our uh, police uh women and men uh, uh in the uh, on the street uh with uh with the broad features and the contours uh, uh, uh of cyber crime uh this is uh, an area which we need to uh, sort of uh, focus on and i'm happy to say that the bprnd uh in association with each of its outlying units uh, uh the what are called the central detective training institutes and the central academy of police training has been focusing on tra- on programs called training of trainers and and uh, where we focus on trainers in state training institutions call them over to our facilities where there are uh, tools and instrumentalities available they are trained on these they are sent back with the hope that they go back and be able to train a lot more now uh, you will appreciate the point that uh uh these are crimes which are not uh, a sort of uh, 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 centered in any particular area uh, cyber crime uh, uh, financial crimes uh, uh, dark net issues related to dark net these are pan india absolutely and indeed, uh, or even uh, trans borders uh, sir mr sena yeah. even trans borders for that matter absolutely that's what i was going to say that pan world and uh, uh, which is why uh, there is an immediate need to focus on this which the government of india in association with all the stakeholders the state governments are included and i am happy to say that uh, all the state governments are alive to this situation to the difficulties that uh, emanate on account of cyber crime and they are cooperating we are even talking about for instance i'll uh, i'll tell you about the capt bhopal the central academy of police training which was envisaged to train deputy superintendents of police now just as ips officers train together at the national police academy and they develop a camaraderie which la- which outlasts the training tenure the right. plan is to have a similar facility which has already been created and curated at capt bhopal where dsps from all over come and uh, this camaraderie will outlast the tenure of the training and they'll be able to leverage uh, the the sense of friendship and camaraderie they have developed uh, 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 later for professional gains absolutely this and i am mentioning this uh, uh, for the simple reason that uh, 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 somebody sitting in place x uh, in one part of the country could commit a crime in place y in another uh, part of the country and until and unless there is a sort of uh, camaraderie a sense of ownership a sense uh, of working together amongst uh, police personnel at the cutting edge it will be difficult for us to combat the crime absolutely point well taken mr rao how do we make police more sensitive towards the need of the people of course uh, the public image has to be still developed 
police and community relationships uh, has to be enhanced. Uh, uh, but the process already started. You look at the Supreme Court starting with the DK Basu case, DK Basu case and uh, 1997, which comes from West Bengal. And the DK Basu case was instrumental in reforming the criminal procedure code, particularly section 41 of the CRPC. And police community relations are improving. And uh, one of the first step is uh, the uh, major, the curriculum, what we are looking at, more training, more training of how community should uh, welcome the police. And then uh, this process has already begun, but it takes uh, some more active consideration and BPRND and uh, they have already initiated working with the national law schools and other institutions all over India. Uh, I think uh, I would uh, at this moment would say that let's look at more uh, training, training of uh, and look at uh, the issues like one of the major issue is uh, coming about about custody memo, arrest memo and more right. openness and transparencies in the policing processes. One more issue I wanted to highlight is about uh, the legal aid has really emerged as a very important mechanism not only in India, but all over the world, the United Nations guidelines, comprehensive guidelines on legal aid in the criminal justice system also highlights about legal aid in the police station right. and more visitorial mechanisms. We have the visits to the, uh, the prisons is already there, but we also need more visits to the police station. Absolutely, sir. That will really will open up and will enhance and increase police and community relationships. Very, very valid suggestions you made there, Professor Rao, but I'm completely out of time. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mr. Goyal, Professor Rao and Mr. Sinha. We'll keep discussing this very crucial issue of police reforms in our episodes to come. But that's all we could pack for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.